Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, today we have our first guest with us in the studio. We're going to be looking at something that is not often talked about in Nigeria, but is really, really important. Living with cerebral palsy in Nigeria. What exactly is the government doing? How are individuals reacting to this? Is there any support? Is there as much information and awareness out there? Now, one initiative that constantly puts out information, supports, and assists those living with cerebr cerebral palsy in Nigeria is Benola Initiative. And we have the co-founder of Benolia Initiative here with us, Air Vice Marshal Femi Badebo, retired OFR, which he co-founded with his wife, Alaba. He'll be here to share with us exactly what prompted him to do this and how he's been faring so far. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank Welcome, you sir. for having me. All right, so um, founding, you know, starting your initiative, it's, it's good to hear the stories again. You know, it's, it's a reminder of the fact that nothing, no pain ever goes to waste. You find your purpose in different ways. Yes. I've heard this story before, but I'd definitely yeah. like to hear it again. So tell us about the origin of Benula Initiative. Well, I have a son who's 22 years old now, but um, uh, he was born when I was still serving. And for 12 years, I was on the road, and my wife virtually managed him alone in Nigeria and for a couple of years in the UK. Uh, by the time I retired in 2008, she decided to come back to Nigeria, uh, partly because not much was really happening um, in terms of improved care for him uh, or management for him over there. And then, of course, the concern about how I was going to manage uh, on my own in retirement. And uh, they came back, and we continued to... Uh, do what we could in retirement. And then um, 2011, um, because he had a very bad case of scoliosis, which is the twisting of the spinal cord, uh, which we couldn't sort out in the UK, we were able to get to India, and where he had a major surgery. And by the time I came back, I think spending four to over four months in the hospital with him, uh, seeing all the process and all, I, I, I really learned a lot. And coming about what my wife had gone through and um, what most parents must be going through. And so when I came back, um, one thing led to another. A doctor friend of mine encouraged me to start an NGO. Uh, as a military officer uh, or somebody who served in, the in government for 35 years, I didn't think I was to come out and fight government because that's what most NGOs try to do. Uh, but after discussing with this gentleman, I found that there was something else we could do which is to proffer a solution, okay? Raise awareness about the problem and proffer a solution. And the only way to do that is to build our capacity and also to be begin to see how we could put out the information which is lacking, and that's what Benola has focused on. So we don't run a home, we don't run a school, but we have slowly grown to become the most uh, authoritative uh, initiative on cerebral palsy. We're very highly known on social media, even outside the country now. And a lot of people really appreciate what we're pushing, which is knowledge and uh, also acceptance. So when, when people who actually notice that their children have signs or like, okay, yes, they, they can tell that their child actually has or feel that their child has cerebral palsy, do you have medical organizations that you work with to help such children or persons? Well, I'll say that um, I'm not a medical doctor, and I try, I, I mean, I always insist that parents who contact us understand that we're not into treatment. And actually, there is no cure for cerebral palsy mm. and a lot of this, you know, neuromedical conditions, but there is management. And the management depends on the child because everything is a spectrum. If you line up 10, 20, children with cerebral palsy, they will present differently to you. So I can't tell you what medication my son is using because that's what Nigerians love. They want to try that, go to the chemist or pharmacy and get something and just move on. Um, you need to go to a hospital, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, or LUT and LASUT, and um, some of the federal medical centers we have over the country have pediatric centers where you can get experts who would look at your child on the child's merits, recommend medication. Okay. And the medications vary from those to control seizures, those to control stiffness, and drooling, and so on. So it's a whole bunch of things, but there is no fixed formula for it. So we provide information. We try to encourage parents. And uh, 
Because you see, the problem in a country like Nigeria is that apart from people not wanting to identify with a complicated condition like that, uh, there are so many charlatans out there who are willing to offer you solutions. Solutions that only further complicate mm. the problem and do nothing. Well, not yes, because you see, the, the, the best form of management is early intervention. That is, first of all, getting the parents to understand that there's no cure and what the issues are. And you see, in the first year or two, you can't tell how bad it's going to be. We have graduates, we have people with first, second degrees, we have people who are married, who have cerebral palsy, who drive cars and so on. And you have cases like mine, who at 22 can do nothing for himself. Okay? Uh, that, and then because my son has received a lot of care, my mom, my, his mom has been wonderful. Uh, she's an authority in her right in all kinds of things, you know, medication and all that. But you find that some of them have serious issues with stiffness. And because they've not received this, the proper kind of medication and therapy, uh, which is physiotherapy and all that, um, if you see some of them by the time they're 12, 13, 15 years old, their body, they've gone into all kinds of very nasty body contortions, twisted spines, um, twisted arms and legs, uh, and so on. Um, they may, they're not necessarily a good sight to look at if you've not cared for them well, which is why you don't see a lot of CP cases. And even when you talk to some parents and you tell them to, to go to some homes and they see some pictures, they tell you, no, 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 that's not what my child has. Your child has CP. I've met people at 35 who didn't even know they have cerebral palsy, okay, because it is mild and it affects maybe just one part of the body where they could speak, they could manage, so it's like maybe they have polio or, or, or maybe they so had an accident. Basically, there are different levels mm. to CP. Yes. Let's look at 22 years after, and you and your wife have done a great job, you know, adjusting and finding a way around this. But 22 years ago, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. At the point where your wife just had a baby and you found out that your baby had cerebral palsy, how did you react, you and your oh, wife? Uh, first of all, um, by the way, we never had that name before. Um, and I'll tell you, it took me couple of years to be able to pronounce it. I pronounce it very well now. But it's like, so, 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 you know, you're trying to figure out what is this? And, um, you know, you live in denial. And of course, you get from the doctors and even older parents, there's almost a hope. Because, you see, doctors, like I said, in the first two years can't tell you how bad it's going to be. And the chances are that some children will get stronger and be able to at least get to the mild side of it. And so everybody's hoping that things will get better. You know, it's like the child, first of all, can't hold an egg steady, uh, is drooling, has seizures, all those kind of things that people hope they'll outgrow. And by the time you get the right expert's attention, then you realize that there's no cure to it. Um, then you can focus on care. But when you meet parents who continue to five, ten years, keep hoping. And I get people asking when they call. A lot of people, um, they can be very nasty. All they, they don't even introduce themselves. Hey, I have a child with cerebral palsy. What can you do for me? And he's like, excuse me. You could even introduce yourself. You could even say where you're calling from. Because it's, it's not what I can do for you in terms of your child. I tell people, Benola now is about you, the parent. We need to get you to understand that it's about changing the mindset, about accepting that God has given you this child the way the child is. And the child is going to get you know, better, but not as much as you expect. But if you can come to terms with the fact that this is not a problem. You see, um, a lot of things are happening. Uh, you can see things have changed tremendously. Disability is becoming attractive, and I'm happy about it. I say attractive. Uh, you, even in Wazobia, yeah, you have Kul FM and all. You have some special people working with you, okay? And that's what it's all about. We must put them out in public view. We must show the success story because that's what Benola is doing. Benola is all about the positive side of disability because everything has a positive side. If you look only at the negative side, honestly speaking, you'll be dejected and upset and all day. But if you look into the eye of a disabled person and you smile at them, they don't smile and they melt you. Maybe we should look at both sides, you know, yeah. what really, holistically, let's look at what it means to live with cerebral palsy in Nigeria. Um, it's difficult. It's very expensive. Uh, the medications that you need, um, most of them, even till now, 
there are one or two medications that we have still have to make special arrangements to get from India because they're either not in stock or they're so limited. When we started Benola, we thought, let's get the numbers out. Once we get the numbers out, I'll tell you, there's money in disability management. Not for me, okay, but for the experts. Pharmaceutical companies, uh, people who sell disability aid, wheelchairs, st stuff like that, okay. Diapers, which my son still uses at 22, uh, adult diapers. There's so much money to be made. But when we came out with the numbers, over 700,000 in Nigeria, over 80,000 in Lagos alone, Lagos State alone, it looks like, wow, somebody will jump at it. But the next thing that hits you is that 70 to 80% of these people cannot pay for anything. So unless we can get government or private sector to fund these drugs and these assistive devices, then no businessman is going to bring them in. Okay, and that's a sad reality of it. Wow. So what actually happens to parents who can't afford? Like, what's the, what's the arrangement for them to help or manage their children's uh, situation? It's sad. Mm. It's really sad because what you find is a lot of parents don't, they abandon the children. Uh, that's why we have a few homes that at least are helping out, taking care of these kids, picking them in. Even about five, six years ago, um, they didn't, it was so difficult to find homes where it's coming up. And part of what we are doing in Benola is to encourage mothers. A lot of these mothers who are jobless right now because taking care of those kids is a 247 thing. Um, they can set up their care centers. They can start one kind of facility or the other around their child, whether the child is 2 years, 5 years, 15 years old or whatever. And that becomes a source of income. And that becomes also um, a sort of, it brings, puts some life into them. And I'll tell you that when we started in 2013, there was just one home in Lagos doing cerebral palsy. But now it's amazing. I can tell you from Agbara to Uma here to George to Oshobo to even just at the, on the 2nd of January, one woman who had been following me for a while from Bida sent me a flyer, she started at home. I mean, or something, a, a daycare. You understand? So it's, it, you know, things are changing. And we're looking for more mothers to understand this. The sad thing is that the fathers are not supporting. A lot of fathers are just not there. They either abandon the women or just tolerate them and spend all day at work and at play and they're hardly there at home. Or, or maybe even blame the women and say, if you had lived healthier lifestyle choices, maybe you wouldn't have had a child like this. Yeah, have you ever experienced yeah, situations it's, it's, like that? It's not, that's why most of them, I'll tell you, most of the women who have CP children, uh, I'd say more than 70% are single mothers mm -hmm. because the fathers have left. Okay. And when these women have no job or they can't leave the house or do, go to the market to do one or two things, you can imagine the income level of that family. It's really terrible. So um, you see, the, the, the men have their issues. Their ego is battered. Um, you feel that you have failed as a man because your child is not up to scratch. Uh, then you have the family thing. You have the religious thing. You have the traditional thing that puts pressure on you to get another wife, to get another child, and so on and so forth. So um, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of advocacy and in terms of information management for people to understand that there is nothing bad about this thing. It's not infectious, it's not contagious, and it is not, you can't transmit it. So we've also had a lot of women who, of couples, who've not had a second child for years. I mean, last year, some gentleman out of the blues, suddenly just called me up and said I should, he wanted me to come for naming ceremony on the other side of town. And I thought, what is going on? And I thought, okay, let me accept. And the next thing, he called me to say his wife wanted to thank me because I was coming for a naming ceremony. And then he explained, you know, they had, had a child, 14-year-old boy with cerebral palsy, who could actually walk and do one or two things, but they just couldn't get together to have a second child until maybe they started reading some of the things we're putting out and all, and they give it a try. And they ended up with twins, a boy and a girl, perfectly normal. Wow. wow. So he had a big party in, 
Apulia were part of town and so on. So it's like the, there is a lot that people really need to understand. Okay, but just quickly tell us, what are the positive things about people or kids with CP? Oh, they're awesome. They, uh, um, they have a smile that can kill you. <laughs> um, you take care of them and you will get nothing but just love coming out of them. Because, you see, they, they have a tolerance for pain and they are totally oblivious of anything. So it's, um, like I said, it's, it, the, the problem I've, I've come to find actually are with the ones that are not that bad off. Those ones that are able to speak, those ones that have been able to go to school. Society has treated them so badly that, um, and you'll find with, with some disabled people that when you try to get close to them, um, you, you know, they look, they're, they're more self-centered than you would expect. And they, they are more likely to try to use you because everybody else has treated them badly. So the society has to change for things to really work well. Very true. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your story. And thank you for all the work that you do with Benola Initiative. Indeed, cerebral palsy is not a death sentence. The people who are living absolutely amazing and impactful lives with this. We also have Tobila Bajai, who is a lawyer, and she's one who's living with CP as well. But she's gone on to become a lawyer. So if you have any questions, you know, comments, contributions with regards to people living with CP, or you know someone who is, Benola Initiative is the foundation to contact. How can people reach you? We are on social media. We, are on, we have a website that okay. has loads of information. Brilliant. Um, just Google Benola. You'll All right. Find so it. Google Benola Initiative for more information. Thank you for joining us. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.